All right, welcome everybody to this episode of Breaking Absolutes. Um, just a quick reminder on what this channel is about, the kind of things that I try and do with it. Um, it's not a typical radio format. Um, really what I try and do is dimensionalize artists that I think are doing really important um, work. Uh, and again, not to si sound high-minded about it, but I think that the music deserves a broader audience. And I think once we have conversations with these artists that are, you know, not the typical that um, hopefully we can draw more people to the music because I think it's deserving. Um, so that's why I call it Breaking Absolutes. And I, I editorialize pretty heavily the artists that I have on the show um, to talk to people. I think that sort of meet this criteria, if you will. Um, so with that, today I'm talking to Roy Kahn. Um, many of you will know Roy from his time uh, with Camelot, of course, but his musical life predates Camelot significantly and has continued significantly after that uh, with Conception. Um, there's some really, really interesting things he's done that are either collaborative or solo things that I want to talk to him about. Uh, but just as a way of nodding a little bit to some of the um, acknowledgement that he's seen from the industry, which, as I've said before, isn't always the, the the only or best hallmark, but it's one input that's worth uh, noting. The very first um, conception record um, spent um, near, you know, for my research, spent three weeks uh, on on a, uh, I think it's called uh, Norstoppen. My, my, my foreign pronunciation is horrible, so Roy will keep me honest. Uh, but it's a radio hit list. Um, and so, it, you know, right out of the gate, um, the work that Roy was doing as a songwriter and a vocalist was being, uh, was meeting with some regard. Um, of course, people will know that uh, of the success with Camelot. I just looked it up with records like Epica and Black Halo. It was charting all over Europe, um, uh, charted in, in the States on the Billboard 200 uh, as, a as a top heat seeker, uh, cresting at 18, number 18. Um, so, so Roy's talents have, have seen success with two different groups. And I think this shows that he brings something really interesting and important to the music that he creates, regardless of, of who he's working with. Um, and he has a very distinctive style. Um, I have a, of a personal bias or penchant for vocalists who, uh, inject a certain theater, uh, into how they sing and deliver a song. Is not the only way, but I, I think it's um, I think it's an art form that not all vocalists, frankly, can do. And Roy is a, absolutely a top practitioner of this. Um, in fact, in many ways, I think set the trend on this. So, with that as my setup, let me bring the man on, and we'll chat with him. Roy, welcome. Hi, Peter. Thank you for joining me. I know it's uh, probably late for you uh, where you're at. <laughs> Well, th thanks for having me. Uh, first of all, and uh, it's not that late. It's uh, it's uh, like eight thirty. Okay. Night. Okay. And, uh, yeah. So, so not too bad. Yeah. Not too bad. No. Well, um, I want to talk to you about a, a whole range of things, um, but I like to get a little bit of a feel for the the young, get a feel for the young Roy. Um, I, I know from some some of my reading that you. Uh, early on were a pianist and spent many years doing that and ultimately some of your focus shifted but I wanted to know if that was the sort of seed from which your musical life germinated or if you had or if your musical family like where did the penchant for music begin for you mm -hmm. well my, my my mom and dad were always interested in in music in the sense they 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 listened to music that was uh, you know, still today to me, interesting. Um, so, so, you know, I spent quite a bit of time going through their record collections and, and, uh, I think that's somehow where it started, but, but, you know, as far as musicians in my, in my family goes, I guess, uh, we'll have to go back to my grandpa who was, a who was, a uh, not a professional, but he played the accordion, you know, like hours every day. That was his huge passion in life. So uh, I guess I must have inherited something, you know, of, of, of that whole thing from him. Um, but I think it, it, it really uh, started with me discovering music that my parents listened to when I was a yeah, young child. Yeah. Well, you um, I even saw a picture, I think, on I don't know if it was a, is the band website of you at at 
the the keys as a young boy, and you uh-huh. um, you studied for many years, and then that was actually it was on the strength or the desire to to continue in that tradition that you applied to some sort of music school, if I if I'm remembering correctly, and you, the feedback you got was um, that the competition in it, it, with at the piano was going to be pretty fierce that year. And so you kind of shifted and declared vocals as the primary instrument. Had you, at that point, had you been doing quite a bit of vocal work or was that real nascent for you at that point? No, not a whole lot at that point. Uh, I had uh, um, I had uh, auditioned for a couple of bands and I had just started in like a top 40 band and we'd done like, you know, a, a few, like a handful of gigs. Uh, and uh, well, I start. I went to start from the very beginning as as a as a musician myself. Yeah. Uh, I I started playing the clarinet at the age of maybe oh. nine or ten. So so that's how I started in in like a in a in a uh, uh, like a school band yeah type thing. And uh, and then I started play. I started playing the piano quite late. Actually, uh, I, I didn't okay. really get going with the piano until I was maybe 12, 13. And that's, that's considered quite late, you know, uh, as, as far as getting real good, you know, goes. So, uh, and that, that was the reason why um, the, the school that I uh, uh, applied at recommended, I, they should, I mean, the, 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 the um, woman at the office there asked me, Hey, uh, uh, I, I see here that you started playing the piano at eight, uh, at 12. And uh, unless you're like really, really talented, I just want to say that you know the, the piano is is is, re- is really hard to uh, uh, the competition is going to be real rough, especially this year. And uh, and then she asked me if I had any you know interest in singing at all. And and uh, like I said, I just started singing and and uh, yeah, kind of like that. So so I felt that that was a that was a fair chance to to you know slip in there somehow, and and it worked. So. Yeah. Never heard that. When you so you at the time that you actually entered that more formal environment, you said, "Do I understand you'd started to do a little bit of auditioning for local bands, just like uh, cover groups, or did that come later?" No. Yeah, I, I did. I, well, the thing was, uh, a, f- a f- friend of mine or my best friend's brother heard me sing in the shower at at school, uh, and and he had some friends that were doing a punk band. And they were looking for a singer, right? And I, <laughs> I did one audition for them, but that wasn't really my thing. I mean, but, uh, I mean, no disrespect, but punk is not my my thing, right? Sure. So uh, I did that one audition, and then um, and then another band, this top forty band, contacted me and asked me if if uh, I wanted to audition for them, and that, that was the first time I sang in a microphone. Uh, and and that was the yeah that that was a. a pretty cool for a top 40 band at, at that time it was sound pretty good so uh and they liked my voice so we we did like a, a couple of years together you know a little bit back and forth but uh that was a real start I'd yeah say. and then you um at some point you actually took a um began to study with a an opera coach do i, do I have that right yeah yeah is and this is what I'm kind of driving at here is as I've listened to, um, I, I had listened of course New Year music before, but in preparation for this conversation, I've I've been sort of consuming as much Roy Kahn music as I can, whether it's Conception or Camelot or some other things that I want to talk to you about. Uh, oh. But you you from the very beginning, stylistically, um, you you sing more clean than you do with grit. You, you, um, and you have this this uh, unique ability to sing. Um, well, you have quite the range, and you sing you sing in a deeper voice uh, more than than many vocalists do. Uh, without, and of course, you have a much higher range. But you have this ability to move from full tones into a very light, delicate sound, and you do it with such facility. I'm wondering if this is if this was a an organic technique and ability, or if this is something you really cultivated through your training. Well, obviously a lot of a lot of this came along with, you know, just just simply singing, you know. But uh I I I think I have a 
some of this really came easy to me in the sense that you know I had I guess you could call it sort of a talent you know from, from the beginning uh but um you know all the years of practicing and singing definitely uh, definitely helps so I, I can't really say at which point you know um uh stuff like that little technical uh uh things like that occurred but um and I can't really remember if I could do stuff like that, like in the very beginning. So, so I'm not sure, but uh, it, it really is like, you know, I, I just love singing. It's a big passion to me. And uh, yeah. like with a lot of other things you learn in life, you know, all of a sudden things click, you know, like, like, like when you, uh, uh, when you're a little kid and you hear people whistling, you want to start try whistle. Right. And, yeah. and you just, can't, you can't, just can't do it. And but you practice and you just you know just blow <laughs> air out of your mouth yeah and and all of a sudden it's there it's just uh, it's just weird you know you you just you know uh, uh, um, if you do things over and over again you 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 narrow in on something and all of a sudden you know something clicks and and you're there and and I guess that also goes with a lot of all these little technical. Uh, fragments that that all together you know make a, a a singer yeah well you know there's there are other guys that that um do some of the things you do but as i went back to the very earliest conception stuff that was very very early for the adoption of of a vocal approach that married this willingness because i think there's sometimes a little bit of a um I don't know, the thrust of a lot of, of heavy music is to kind of go at the vocal uh, with a lot of energy. And that's fine, and, and you do the same. But but it seems like you you um, there's more balance in your vocal approach. And I, I don't mean to make that sound a better than. It's just uh, mm-hmm. I've, I you're one of the very first vocalists, even with those early conception records, that use this this technique to kind of move in and out of these these delicate high notes not and then you know the other times you'd go at them with a full voice uh you know and and energy in the way that we are more typical of metal um and i so i would it's just my way of trying to, to unearth how you came by that and it sounds like it was just use of your voice um you know um finding finding techniques that worked for you but part of this is me kind of complimenting you because i think that um how you develop these these tools in your sort of vocal tool belt um, have made you a very unique vocalist in the rock scene and metal scene. Well, th- thanks. First of all, uh, and and again, you know, a lot of this just just came along the way as as I you know uh, uh, fr- from from the age of fourteen fifteen I was really uh, uh, you know I picked up uh, uh, the truth person student front of the mirror quite early and, and and pretended I was a singer. So I was I was really into music at a very, very uh, early stage uh, um, from when I was a little kid. Uh, and I guess, you know, the type of vocals that I liked, uh, uh, one of the first real like f- fan moments for me was Aha with Morton Harkin. I, I, I just instantly fell in love with that really high, shiny voice. And that was actually before I I really knew that I had, you know, somewhat that type of voice myself. Yeah. Uh, so, so that that's that's just luck, I guess. That that you know, uh, uh, or coincidence that I happen to like those kind of singers uh, um, before I really start singing myself. But from that point, I I I definitely tried to you know emulate my voice. To sound like these singers that I listened to, uh, and but I, and to be honest though, I was quite frustrated when I started listening. Uh, I, in the beginning, I listened to pop music, right, and then at the age of 15, 16, I turned over to metal because all the all the the guys in my class they listened to metal, and and you know uh, uh, it was just a matter of time before I was was going to be uh, um, you know uh, a metalhead. And at the age of sixteen, I was sold, you know. So and the first stuff that I heard was uh, I think it was uh, Seven Seas with TNT and Tony Harnell. You know, had this like it's just insanely high yeah. voice. And and at that point I was I, I tried, but you know I was there was nothing in me that felt you know uh, uh, that that was gonna that I was gonna 
you know, be able to do anything like that ever. I just liked it, and I tried to to you know hit those high notes, and well, and I, you know, but his 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 is probably one of those guys that <laughs> go the highest. Yeah. Uh, uh, and um, but um, and and also you know th- there were times even when I started with conception where I felt that you know oh, I wish I had some more some more grit, you know, but, but, you know, especially when I go up and, and hit the high nose, I wish I would rasp up more and, and be more, yeah, yeah. more, more uh, gritty. Uh, but I, I also understood that, you know, the, the, the way that I sang, you know, had a, a certain style to it. So, you know, that, that's, that's something that I early on uh, learned to cultivate and, and, and appreciate, you know, for that. Yeah. And I'm glad you, I'm glad that you followed sort of the course um that is more natural to your voice or at least that was you know uh, the the path that you took um, because as much as, as as cool as the that sort of grit and rasp is and there's and there's a lot of guys that are good at it um i think that it's uh it's less typical um to have a vocalist who becomes so expert at using clean tones uh, up and down the range and so, what you know, conscious or or unconscious, um, the path that you took um, created. I mean, you helped kind of forge a path of vocalists. I think who realized that they there was a way to sing metal and to do it like meaningfully and powerfully without having to be a guy who sounded really gritty in the you know. Um, uh-huh. And I and and it just makes metal that much more interesting as a category because then it's not all the same. Um. But one of the things that I think it lends itself to, and this is your, this, if you've seen any of my shows or for the people who are watching, another one of my biases is I love music that has a narrative sense. There's a lot of oh. great rock tunes that aren't really about anything. They're just fun or they're anthemic and that's all good stuff. But I, I love a song that has some sort of narrative center, not necessarily a concept album, although I, I really do love concept albums. But one of the, I feel like the way you sing lends itself to this really well because there's so much expression uh, because of the things we've talked about. And so it made me start um, kind of looking at a bunch of your music through that lens. And it feels like in, in many of the, I don't know if it's true uniformly across all the music that you've written, but you very often are the one that's, that's writing the lyrics. Is that not true? Yeah. Uh, yeah, pretty much. Yeah. All the way, yeah. Um, when you when you're approaching a song, are you do you have uh, something in mind, or is is a lot of what evolves really just a, a reaction to the music, lyrically? No. I mean, well, I mean the approach is 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 different from from song to song, but um, uh, you know, once in a while I do, you know, I start the song with just the lyrics. That's that's quite seldom, to be honest. Uh, uh, but but sometimes I'll have like a verse or a chorus or like a you know a, a rhyme or or, or uh, you know uh, some sentences that I feel really strongly about, and I try to you know put the put those words into a song somehow, and 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 that works. But normally I make the music first or I get the music from, from somebody or me and, and my partners work out the, the music first. And then I'll just, uh, um, I'll just jam over that music. And almost every time there's going to be, there's going to be words or even full sentences that, that are, you know, more or less understandable. Oh, sorry. That's my alarm going off here. No worries. Um, uh, 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 almost always there's, there's going to be um, parts of that jamming out that that's going to be understandable or it, it makes sense somehow or it just sounds so nice that I'll work real, real hard to to try to, um, you know, find words that that that, you know, sound more or less the same. So I can keep that feel and that that timbre in, in my voice that 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 exact word uh, creates. Yeah, uh, and I think that's that's uh, that that's the most common way for me to to write a song. So in a sense, I feel you know that that it's, it's almost magical, you know how how that works out sometimes. Yeah, so I'll start with nothing, right? 
I mean, music in itself is magical. You start with nothing before you start writing a song. That's like virtually nothing. And, and, you know, at the end of it, there's, there's a song and there's yeah. this thing, it's emotions and, you know, it's, it's, it's fantastic. Um, but, uh, um, uh, the, 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 the way that, uh, I, I don't think it's a super unique way of writing songs. I think a lot of people write songs that way. Yeah. Uh, but, um, but that's mainly, but it was, you know, sometimes I have a theme that I really want to write about. So, you know, regardless of how the jamming out sounds, uh, uh, I'll try to, uh, you know, force that theme into the song. If I feel the theme fits the, the character of the song, let's say. Yeah. Well, and I, um, how you're describing this is, is familiar both to me personally, because I'm also a musician, but also from co other conversations I've had where, yeah. Uh, it, sometimes there's a very considered idea or theme going in, but often it just sort of grows from response to the music, but then takes a form um, that seems at the end like it, it must have been also purposeful, even though uh, I like your word, it's kind of magical at the end of it. It's like, wow, and it has a coherence. Um, and and my my feeling about a lot of the way you write is through the process you've described, you do arrive at... at um, lyrically with songs that feel like they've got sort of a narrative center. Um, and so there's, so they're really interesting to listen to because they feel like they're, um, I think personally, I, I think these, this kind of lyrical approach is more um, emotionally impactful. And so I wanted to ask you, you know, um, kind of skipping real quick over to Camelot for a moment. You guys did sort of two big, actual concept albums that were like two parts of a Faustian tale. Yeah. Um, uh, did you, were you doing the lyric writing on that or was that more collaborative? How did that work? Well, the, the, the bulk of lyrics have always been me, you know, Camelot or Conception. Uh, uh, but um, with, with that, with those two albums, we took, we, uh, 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 we were struggling to find, we, we, we had this idea of a two, two-part concept because we had you know some ideas that were you know sort of uh uh you know pointing in that direction and then i found this um really uh nice edition of of, of faust uh in my shelf that was my wife's actually and and i started reading it but i mean i i have to admit that that book is so it's so complicated that that it's uh uh, uh i'm not gonna say that that you know, uh, I, we had to go in and 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 buy summaries and read summaries of sure you know that other people had written about the thing and and you know even those were hard to understand right yeah so but we we you know we sort of managed to to draw the essence out of the 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 two books and the stories and how they how they um um. Sort of mirrored each other and 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 made a whole together those two parts, uh, and then we incorporated that uh, or, or our own experiences and, and our own lives and, and made our own uh, uh, Faustian story, so to speak. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. You it, you did a, a, a really good job. Um, uh, I'm such a fan of of concept records that you know sometimes I'll just go. Uh, searching the internet for favorites and th mm. this this work you did on these album is always listed as one of the top concept albums from a rock or metal band um and musically even musically and, and not not to dissociate the story from the music because i know they're integral but the um many of the of fan the the camelot fan base many of their favorite tracks come from this era of the band so you guys were really hitting on a lot of cylinders there. Um, and I think it's just another testament to, uh, even though you had source material, conveying that lyrically and landing uh, that in a way that's that's powerful because you're, you're doing such an abridgment when you're writing lyrics uh, is is really well done. Um, it's just, a, I'm, I'm teasing out, I think, some of the things that I think are really distinctive about your career. Uh, and I love I love your lyrical approach. I'm a writer uh, in part of my life, so this is yet another thing that, that the lens I look through when I'm looking at music. Um, 
So it's and it sounds like it comes quite naturally to you. So uh, I always I always like like reading, right? And I always like writing. Uh, and and although you know I I, I just explained the, the the process of how I jam out lines and, and and how words pop out of that again. Yeah. But uh, um, there's still a good bit of work from from that point to a finished lyric. Right. So, so, so I really work hard, uh, and I take every every song, you know, very seriously uh, as far as getting the uh, uh, lyrics to a point where I can believe them when I sing them. I I, I have to have a story that makes sense, uh, at, at least to me, right? Yeah. Uh, and, and I have to believe it somehow. Otherwise, I can't sing it with with uh, you know with persuasion when, when, when I perform yeah in studio or live that's that, that's yeah that's pretty um I think it's even if if someone has ha, ha, never hears you articulate that I think that they know it instinctively um, um, about your about your work it's a it's one of the strengths of what you do um so now I want to I want to talk about you had a period where you kind of um, retired from music and it's interesting to me because I've had I've had so many of these conversations now and I found that this is um, it's pretty common with with career musicians to have periods where they kind of just burn out and they they uh, in fact the last conversation I had was with Michael Sweet and he he stepped away from music entirely to run a cranberry farm for a mm. period of time um, because mm. he, you know just he just burnt out and mm -hmm. I know that you had a period where you stepped away. Um, um, I wanted to ask you about that. Like, uh, um, I, I don't want to get too too far into your personal business, but had you just arrived at a point where it was you were just overwhelmed by everything and just needed for your sanity to step away? You know, that, I mean, that whole thing was a cocktail of, of several things that that just happened to, you know, uh, um, climax at that point. Uh, that, that I, I was, uh, you know, as as you all know, Camelot was getting more and more popular. So so uh, uh, I was away, like you know, months every year, like half yeah. the year at least I was gone. I was uh, having a family, and that was kind of, I mean, that right there was was starting to you know tear me apart. And then you know I was living my life real, you know, not not very healthy. Let's put it that way. Uh, and uh, I, I did a lot of stupid trike back then that you know that that you know i i knew in my heart that I, it was it was going down the drain i remember every time every night when i sang karma i was i was feeling that every time when i sang karma i would feel that you know this this shit is gonna you know it's gonna knock me in the back of the head at some point it's yeah. it's gonna be tomorrow it's gonna be you know two years from now i don't know but you know the way I live my life, that's not going to work. It's not. It's not sustainable. Uh, and 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 then it happened. And that was kind of that was also kind of magic because I knew for so many years actually that that this was going to not work out. And then all of a sudden it it happened. I broke down. I had a full summer almost where I barely slept, like six weeks, six eight weeks where I you know I didn't sleep a whole lot of hours during those six to eight weeks. And I was going really completely crazy. Uh, and in connection with that, you know, I, I a lot of stuff happened, but um, uh, it was, it was, uh, uh, I've been saying in interviews that, you know, quitting Camelot was the best decision that I've ever, you know, made. And, and, and by that, I don't mean that, you know, it, it's Camelot was a fantastic thing in my life. And and Tom and the, and the other guys were you know it had nothing to do with them it was all it was all me and the way I lived my life and I just couldn't take it any longer and I was also overworked I worked all the time even when I was home first thing I do when I got back home was I would, I would kick my shoes off in the hallway and and I just sit right down at the computer and start working you know I, I was really not a very uh, uh, I was not a good husband and I was not a good father uh, and. Uh, yeah, lots of things that was that weren't good, you know, about me at that point. Well, one of the things that, um, and you can tell me if this is you're comfortable talking about this, but one of the things that it seemed like 
you did some some measure of, and from what I can tell on some of your uh, social media presence, still do, is um, you became um, involved in your in your church. Is that mm-hmm. a is that a fair statement? Yeah. Well, actually, I, I was very non Christian up to this point, and 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 then I experienced some stuff that you know. Um, and not not only me, you know, it was me to get with other people, and you know, from from not having any contact with the well, should I put it the spiritual world, let's put it that way. All of a sudden, it was bubbling all around me, yeah. and it was it was I mean, it was real. I still have to sit down and pinch myself in the arm, you know, and 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 because it's not that easy to be a Christian today, and and, yeah. and, and I actually believe it because it's a it's a wild story. But, you know, the, the, some of the stuff that happened was so crazy that, you know, I, I still have to sit down and, and really, you know, go through it and, and remind myself about what happened, you know, and, and the timing of the whole thing and, uh, and, and all that. But the, 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 what happened was I, I had some encounters, let's put it that way, that, that made me totally believe that, that there, at least there's something, you know, more than what we can see and hear and, and, and you know. Uh, um something more than than the than the world we the way we see it yeah uh and i i coincidentally came in touch with people that were you know um that were you know willing to help me and they were they happened to be christian and uh as far as i could see you know some of the stuff at least that i I experienced was pointing in, in that direction that there was something out there that 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 cared about me it's i know it sounds weird but you know that's that's that was that was real it still is real and and uh uh i went to this church that was um um they, they had something called the alpha course i don't know if, if that's something you know what it is but it's like a they they they, they invite people to discuss the bible you know that they, they they you can you know, come in there with all kinds of questions, all kinds of questions. And, and I obviously had a lot of them since I've been so, so anti-Christian up to that point. And, and I still had a lot of um, pretty, you know, uh, uh, rough questions as to, you know, how this whole thing could be true or, or how this whole thing uh, could make any sense at all, even though I had ex- experienced stuff that, you know, pointed in that direction. So I, I did that that course, and uh, I uh, made some friends there, and then we uh, 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 experienced some really weird stuff that prophesied that we were going to go to Hawaii, and we went to Hawaii. Uh, I went to a school there, and, uh, and 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 that whole year and a half was weird and crazy, and well, it was like we were in a bubble. Uh, and then we came back, and and everything, you know, sort of came back to normal but you know that whole experience um i guess gave me a foundation that 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 you know i, I don't think there's any turning back for me i think think that was something that's always going to be uh, uh um is always going to be an anchor you know in my life yeah from that on. yeah yeah i mean um i i i i ask with the most, the utmost respect, because I think that, um, just broadly speaking, one of the things that seems to be most absent from a lot of people's considerations is any sort of spiritual sense, um, mm-hmm. and a lot of people will decide differently what that path looks like for them. Um, but we say, you know, it seems to me we exercise a lot on on um, intellectual fortitude uh, and growing our minds. Uh, there's a, a lot of energy now on personal physical health and, and which is also super important. Um, but there is, there's something about, um, the human experience that is more than those things. And, you know, we all feel it because we all have this, there's this dimension of emotion and love that, um, people feel without having, uh, explanations scientific explanations. And it just seems to me that it's, it's, uh, less regarded than it should be. And so when I've you know had conversations with with musicians like you who have um, sort of begun to tap this this spiritual side, I have a lot of respect for it. And um, it the 
as I was looking at some of your music, one of the things you did after this period of um, sort of being retired, semi-retired, I guess, uh, you were, I think there were some times you were you're singing with your, your with your church or uh, doing some psalms and things, but you released a song called For All. Yeah. Uh, this, this song, uh, Roy, is absolutely gorgeous. It's beautifully oh. sung, and it's... Um, Lyrically, it's very, very poignant. I was hoping that you could talk to us a little bit about it because it feels very much to me, and I don't want to, I don't want to superimpose my, you know, my interpretation of it, but it feels very much like a reflection for you of life and this sort of this this defining moment. And I, I may be overanalyzing it, but I was hoping you'd talk to us a little bit about this song. No, well, you're 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 right on. That that's exactly what it is. And, and uh, I mean, I have written a few things, you know, since I quit Camelot and, and, and uh, up to the point where I uh, rejoined uh, Conception or we, we reunited. But um, that was the only song that I that I wrote, you know, in full with lyrics and, and like, a you know, uh, a, a clear structure from from beginning to end. And uh, and, it, and like you said, you know, it, it is a reflection uh, on on uh, you know that exact point in my life. And uh, I mean, qu- quitting Camelot at that point was wasn't. I mean, it was easy, but it was hard. You know, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. It was easy because I didn't really have a choice. Uh, uh, I was really I was really wrecked. Uh, and. At the same time, it was hard because I, you know, I had to. I had been working to get to that point my whole life, basically, you know, twenty years at least. Yeah. And finally, I was there. And then, you know, then I throw the towel in and say, "Hey, guys, <laughs> I'm, I'm not coming in for the next tour." Okay. Well, what was wrong? Well, actually, I'm, I'm not coming back at all. And obviously, you know, that's to, 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 I mean, everybody, my, my mom was like, well, you, you kidding me? <laughs> you know, are you yeah. serious? And, uh, and then the guys in the band, they thought that, that it was gonna, you know, yeah, that it was gonna pass. And, but I knew in my heart that, that, that summer, you know, already in, in August, I knew that, that that's it. Uh, and, um, yeah, I feel I'm a little bit off on the tangent here, but no, no, um, I think it's. <laughs> I think this song, um, in some ways, when I was when I was listening to it, and I had this sort of opportunity because I was trying to look across your career and all the things you've done. It uh-huh. just seemed to me that there's at least some part of this song that is um, is a reflection on everything that's gone before, and it's a. It seems like it sort of defines a path for you. Um, and, it, and, uh, and it's beautiful. I mean, apart from all of the sort of, um, uh, discussion about it, it's just beautifully, oh. um, composed. And so for folks who've not maybe heard this song or seen it, I really recommend that you go up onto Roy's YouTube channel and listen to this. It's, it's a gorgeous song. Um, but it also, it also kind of led me to, um, kind of just, um, I guess trolling you a little bit to, to look at your social media and there was some mention here and there of so other solo work that was percolating uh-huh. early in the pandemic. Is is there anything that you can tell us about um, future solo work? I I know Conception's going strong, and we're going to talk a lot about Conception here in a minute. Um, uh-huh. But I'm wondering, like, is there is there more solo music that you intend to bring forth? Well, I mean, to start with, uh, I have already um, been working on a a uh, streaming concert that's gonna the theme is gonna be my first so uh i'm gonna do the first song uh that i ever sang in a microphone i'm gonna do the first song that i ever remember hearing from my, my parents collection i'm gonna do you know the uh, uh the first camelot song that i that, that i worked on you know stuff like that uh, wow that's cool uh, so that, that's gonna be interesting so that, that's gonna be the start of it and you know um the pandemic has 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 uh uh held us a little bit back on 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 getting that out but um and, and the guy that's gonna uh the thing is i'm gonna do the streaming concert and then i'm gonna have some interludes 
uh, like little clips in between and they're going to be you know uh, slightly artistically you know twisted uh so and the guy that's going to film them he's been occupied with a, a huge norwegian movie production since july so the pandemic and, and and him being busy with that has has stalled that whole thing but um we're actually going to work together tomorrow uh, uh, and uh, uh we started on monday so hopefully you know i'm going to have that out in not too long and uh and uh yeah i i hope that that's going to be uh, the start of something you know and, and obviously i have a ton of songs you know that i've written since i was 10 12 years old yeah that are still laying around that i've you know i mean i have way more songs than that but i have probably 40 50 songs that i think are you know decently good yeah. that way uh, and i'm really looking forward to you know getting started on recording those and 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 you know develop them fully yeah there's such a you know listening to some of the um the live recordings of you i watched this morning i watched you singing a song uh, called I think it's called you bring you bring me up or you bear me up you um, raise me up yeah you raise yeah. me up sorry Be- oh yeah. my gosh dude uh it, it, just a live recording but it, it is so emotionally powerful um and it just it, it led me to realize that much more the diversity you have uh in the kinds of music that you can sing and so uh, I got excited when I saw the note about um, some solo work and you've got all of this material. Um, so, you know, I'm a, I'm a, I'm, I guess I'm a proponent for in, in the midst of all the other work you're doing, uh, hearing some of this, uh, your expression, your expressions. And I think, uh, the, the for all song is, a is one little, um, it's a complete thought, but it's also this teaser of this music that you kind of can do on your own. And I think it, it also, uh, it gives me confidence in um in how great that music's gonna be <laughs> i'm i'm excited for it so i'm not trying to be pushy here but uh, i think all of your fans would would eagerly embrace a solo record from roy khan <laughs> um um you know i i really i really uh i i actually said last year uh, in some interviews that that you know that whole solo thing was just around the corner and then you know, and then uh, then you had the pandemic thing, and things have not been going, you know, the the way I uh, uh, foresaw. But um, it's it's not too far away. Let's put it that way. And I have, and I have strong confidence in in uh, in these songs that I that I you know have laying here. So yeah, uh, it would be a true pity if if I didn't you know get my shite together and and got it out there, you know. Yeah. So, It'll happen. It'll happen. Well, um, let me talk before we transition to conception um, completely. I do want to ask about a couple of collaborative things you've done. Um, mm-hmm. Just mo- mostly, I guess, just in in the genesis of them. And there's there's a lot of them, so we can't really hit them all because there's quite a few. But you uh, you you sang with uh, Avantasia, right? You did um, uh, Twisted Mind, uh, Scarecrow, yeah. Twisted Mind. Yeah. Uh, how did that come about? Were you, are you just familiar with the the groups? Was this a cold call from the artist? Uh huh. Well, I mean, of, of, of all the collaborations that I do, you know, it's, it's always with people I want to work with, and, and okay. you know, I, I know they have a style or music that 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 I you know that I like somehow. But uh, I think the 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 thing with Avantasia was Tobias and and um, and myself. We were in in Wolfsburg working with Sasha at the same time. I can't remember if it was me or Camelot mixing and them coming in, start working on their album or the other way around, but something like that. And he had this line where he felt that, you know, my falsetto was going to fit real nicely. And, and he didn't feel that he had, you know, that he didn't, uh, 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 he wanted me to do it. <laughs> Let's put it that way. Yeah. And, and then I did that. And then we, um, and then we uh, got in talk uh about me collaborating uh on a song or two and, and that's how that whole thing came about now actually actually i was going to do um i was actually going to uh, work with arion also at that time but i had a virus or something on my vocal cords after um i can't I can't remember if it was europe or, or the us but i had been touring and i was uh, um i couldn't get rid of this this thing on my voice cracking up whenever I hit 
hit a high note. So it was a real struggle getting those those few lines down for Twisted Mind. And and Arion had some some you know some, like a few songs for me to sing, and I just couldn't do it. So, um, but 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 uh, I, I was I was glad I could you know finish Twisted Mind somehow and and help Tobias out on that one. Well, and speaking of uh, Arion, it's just been you've just announced that you're going to be doing uh, something with Star One, right? Revel in Time next year. I think the track is Lost Child of the Universe. Yes. How cool, man! I've had I've had Arjun on the show twice, because um, uh, you know his his career spanned so much. And the last when I spoke with him, they had not begun to sort of disclose the vocalists. Now we know you're one of them. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I mean, yeah. I think, I think that was revealed revealed like a couple of weeks ago or last week, something like that. Yeah, pretty. Yeah, I mean that was real cool. Uh, I, I was afraid he was, you know, you know, never ever going to come back to me after that thing. That you know. Because uh, it was kind of awkward when, when since this I could be on adaptation and why couldn't I do this thing? But that that was just I was just getting to a point where I was afraid of actually losing my voice, like like you know seriously. So so I just had to uh, take a long break at that point. Uh, but I was so happy when he uh, contacted me uh, like uh, yeah, a few months ago about this this uh, Star One project, and uh, uh, I mean his. His, the, 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 that that guy is quite impressive with you know all the stuff he's got going and he's he's so productive you know it's yeah makes me you know <laughs> <laughs> yeah he yeah but, he doesn't uh, he doesn't do the live thing he mostly he he says he can't he got the point he got bored of performing so he just likes to write 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 uh, and uh, this star one project it's a who's who really a vocalist I saw a comment as I was kind of just you know reading a lot of fans uh they're like um finally we're going to have a star one record with my favorite male vocalist uh roy khan and my favorite female vocalist vocalist for jansen for jansen so i think it's 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 cool i think i'm 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 happy that uh and i look forward to this record i think it's going to be great yeah i, th I think so too this is uh, it's really cool the whole thing is really cool yeah well let's talk about conception for a minute um the so you it's the first like real band you joined um they had i think that i read that they had had some different singers but at at some point you got an audition how did that how what was that first moment how did that come to be well uh they they, they only had one singer i think uh for me okay maybe, maybe i'm wrong but i mean in the beginning they um they weren't even called conception they had a different name and and uh so I came in quite early, uh, but um, the thing was, you know, that musical school that I went to, where where, where I uh, was recommended to to uh, apply with um, vocals instead of piano. That's where uh, um, that's where it all started. Because a friend of theirs heard me sing at, at one of the gatherings at that school, and uh, like a month after I quit quit the school, or after the the the, the year was over um they they contacted me and and wanted me to come up and do an audition and i came in I, at that point i was um i wasn't really i just i mean the, the thing was i had you know some some spare time and and i just thought you know and, and weather was real nice and i took my girlfriend in the car and we just went up there and it was just a a, a trip basically that that i didn't have any expectations uh, like I'd heard, you know, a few, a few, you know, bands and demo tapes at home. And, you know, normally y young kids like that, they, you know, they <laughs> sound, there's not too much about the music that that's, that's too, um, uh, tempting normally, but I, I went up there with no expectations at all. And, uh, um, I, I remember the, when, 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 when we sitting there <laughs> sitting at the parking lot with, with, um, in, in my car and then these three guys came walking across the parking lot right and they were all uh, it was like a real sunny warm day and they were wearing like like uh you know uh, uh leather jackets and they had long long hair and they just didn't look too healthy and my, my girlfriend said if that's them you, you're not going to be in that bad <laughs> i can tell you that much <laughs> and, and that was them right 
And then we went to a tourist uh, house uh, and um, we sat down on his couch and, and, and he played me, or they played me, uh, uh, one of the songs that were finished, you know, off of, off of the, off of the um, Last Sunset album. And that was War of Hate. And the first 20 seconds, and I was like, damn, you know, I'm in, you know. It was uh, because it starts with this real frantic uh, uh, flamenco thing. And it was just so tight and precise and 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 cool. I, I you know I, I was I, I made that decision uh, instantly. So that was that was easy. Yeah. And and then I had to argue with my, <laughs> my girlfriend going back home, you know, about why why uh, uh, I was gonna you know join that band that she didn't want me to be in. <laughs> Well, I'm glad you did, uh, and I'm glad you you mentioned this, um, you know, this flamenco flavor, because the the, the music is uh, of conception is distinctive for I think the eclectic influences that you guys are willing to take into it. Um, mm -hmm. There's on the on the next record, I think it's a track um, that I wrote down here called um, "Silent Crying," that mm -hmm. uh, has some some flamenco guitar um, kind of in the up front. But it's a it's a song that also, um, you know, it, it has orchestration in it. It's a it's a really great example of the the various vocal techniques that you employ, and I it's uh, it's I mean it's probably why you guys get defined as a progressive band is because it seems you're you have a willingness just to um, use anything that you think will help help the composition. Is that a fair way to characterize the approach? Yeah, yeah, I'd say so. You know, I mean, our influences back then were, you know, bands like Rush and Queensryche. And I mean, if you look at a band like Queensryche, they're not like, I never looked upon them as like super progressive in the sense that, you know, they didn't go totally off the rails with, with, with you know, super long solos and, and you know, wild, free jazzy uh, 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 parts. But uh there's something about that, the, the, you know, Queensryche, for example, that 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 make them stand out in the sense that they were they were they were doing things differently. And uh, you know, one thing is you add elements uh, uh, from other genres. You you uh, you um, uh, <laughs> I, I I I guess you just I mean I guess that the whole approach is you try to do things. Uh, different, even not 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 only different from other bands, but you try to also make things different from how you've done things in the past. Like we, right. uh, a lot of people want us to do another, you know, uh, uh, like we have just released "Roll the Fire." You might maybe you're going to bring that up, but I'll yeah, <laughs> bring it for you. Yeah, <laughs> we just released a new video and a new recording of "Roll the Fire," which is you know arguably our most popular track, you know, ever, and and. Um, a lot of people, you know, I see, see, see some comments saying that, you know, oh, you should, I like you to make, you know, another song like Roll the Fire. But that, you know, that's exactly how we don't work, you know, because we, if we've made a song like that, we don't, <laughs> we don't want to, we do, do everything it. we can to avoid making that song again, as opposed to a lot of other bands that really try to stay with a, you know, certain formula. Uh, uh, and, uh, 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 you know, that's, that's, uh, at least something that um, makes us feel good about ourselves as, as artists. It may may not be the best thing to do business wise, but you know we, <laughs> we don't care about that. <laughs> yeah, no, you're right. There's um, there's there's bands that f find a distinctive sound, and it seems to be the hallmark of most all of their music. And some yeah. fans love that, but yeah. um, I think for some musicians that would it become you know, a little too monotonous uh, and for some fans, you know, but the, of course the risk is, it, you know, you create fans of a certain era of the band and then they yeah. just, that's what they always want to hear. And yeah. um, that, that can be a challenge, but uh, you know, I love the fact that you guys have, I mean, I, filtered through you, your, your own experiences and your own abilities as a group. It's all, it always is conception but um, I love the fact that there is these different influences. I was listening to a track the other day uh, called "The Moment" off of um, uh, My Dark Symphony, right? Uh, that has this like jazzy. All the drums, the whole thing feels j real jazzy. The drumming, 
Uh, and then the, the the way the choruses come in, and it sounds like you've used some other voices uh, to help sort of fill fill in in the chorus. But the even the progressions, the chord progressions in the chorus were just really unexpected to me. Huh. Um, and, uh, and so I love after that after that verse. It's definitely you know not what you expect. <laughs> yeah, and and that juxtaposition, I um, I think is a if you're if you're a music listener. Um, my contention is that over time, you start to be able to predict, you know, where a chord progression is going to go. Or you've heard so many songs, there's a certain number of choices that a lot of musicians will make. So whenever I'm uh, surprised, I love it. And this is what happens to me with conception music. And so I think that you're when when it's sometimes said in the you know webosphere that you guys have a cult following, I think that those really die hard. Um, conception fans, they love this about you guys that they that you continue to surprise them, and I'm sure you've got fans that would love for you just to remake the same first or second or whatever record. Um, but here's my endorsement. I don't know if it's filling your bank coffers, but keep doing what you're doing. <laughs> <laughs> No, yeah. Well, I mean, you know, it's, it's very important for the, the most important thing for us is to, to to keep ourselves happy so that we can continue to explore and, and, and you know, make new music and, and you know, um, uh, make staying together as a group, you know, interesting to ourselves. Yeah. Uh, and, uh, you know, as long as there are somebody out there that, you know, that like it's, it's going pretty well. So yeah, I'm not going to say that, you know, uh, uh uh, we're pretty happy with the response that we've had, you know, both off of, you know, the the, the back catalog and, and these new two releases that we've done. But um, it's very important for us to to keep uh, things interesting to ourselves. That's number one. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. And so um, uh, I've listened quite a bit to the, the recent, uh, the EP, My Dark Symphony and to State of Deception, which released last year. Um and it sounds like you've got plans for an an extended version of that next year. Is that right? Yeah. That's okay. Right. And and on that, what are what are some of the things we can expect on the the extended version? Well, we're gonna have uh, um um as you may know, we 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 um we regrouped in in twenty eighteen, or that's when we that when that's when we went official about it, and uh, and we released. Um, the EP and we did this this first two concerts uh, uh, here in Norway after like I don't know how long it was 15 years 20 years and six of the tracks are are live tracks from from those two gigs so you know we, we felt that was a pretty special moment in our careers yeah and and felt that you know we wanted to uh, we want, really wanted to share you know uh, some of those moments with our with our fans so. Um, so there's those, and 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 then we have the re-recordings of our, you know, two probably most popular tracks from the back catalog at least, and uh, and that's "Roll the Fire" and uh, "Silent Crying," and then we have two brand new tracks. Actually, uh, one of the tracks were, you know, planned for State of Deception. Uh, it's a really long, uh, very orchestral, and and uh, it's a really cool piece, and and um, we actually had it finished mixed yesterday I heard, oh, nice. heard yesterday and it, it's coming out real real cool so that's going to be a real treat for our fans and plus, plus another um uh, little ballad oh nice nice and then next year i know covid's kind of played havoc with touring but next year you guys are doing some dates and you're also uh one of the headliners for power prog usa right yeah yes yeah. right. that's going to be cool i i it's it's one of the few domestic, I'm in the States, uh, domestic um, festivals I've never been to. So I may have to try and make that one. Yeah, that'd Come be Come down cool. there and check it, check you guys out live. That would be great. You've, um, you've done this really interesting thing on your, on your Facebook page over this whole year. You've been doing this history of conception. It's really uh -huh. cool. It, it, it's all these bite sizes. It's like a couple of paragraphs and there's, I don't know, there's got to be over 40 of them now. Um uh, I, I don't really have a question there. I just think that it's a it's a really fun way for you to have engaged your fans with a lot of this the story of the band, as you guys are now coming out with all of this new music, um, all these old photos of you guys. Uh, it's really cool. I encourage people if they haven't if they're if they're fans of Roy or fans of Conception and you haven't go. I went and read them all. 
it took me a while, but I went and read them all. Uh, it was really fun to kind of follow you guys forward in time a little bit. Yeah. Um, well, since we came back after all these years, you know, I mean, like you said in the beginning, a lot of people know, know me from, from Camelot, right? Uh, but, but, you know, we had four records with Conception before that. And then uh, we just felt that, and with this coming back with these new releases, we felt that, you know, we'd, we'd give people a, a, a chance to, you know, learn a little bit about how, where we came from and, you know, how, how this whole thing started and yeah. been, uh, quite popular. Yeah. Yeah. I, I mean, I don't have any data, but I would, I would guess that there is some number of Camelot fans who are not very aware of conception. And I think that if we make them aware, they're going to love it. So that's part of our little goal here. Um, and I think going back and I think it's a really good idea to re familiarize folks with um, the long history of the band. Um, and in, and you're also doing some sort of, I think, forward uh, forward thinking things with how you're engaging your audience. I, I was reading you guys are doing some, um, I don't know if it's a lottery or, or what it is, but you're giving fans a chance to actually sort of get to know you in person. Can, uh, tell us a little bit about that, because I think th I've never seen a band do well, exactly what you guys are doing here. Yeah, well, yeah, that whole thing is real cool. Uh, um you know when we started uh, up in in uh, like like four years ago now, uh, uh, we thought about how we were going to do it, and and we quickly came to the conclusion that we wanted to do it ourselves. You know, we wanted to to uh, be completely free, and and we wanted to uh, be able to you know uh, extend deadlines if we didn't feel that you know things were finished and and all that kind of stuff, uh, and we didn't want to have anybody like you know telling us that you know. Uh, uh, money was running out or, or anything like that. We just want complete freedom. Yeah. We always had artistical freedom, right? But, uh, um, but, but also on the business side. So we wanted to do everything ourselves. So we uh, set up a crowdfunding campaign and um, that went super well. Um, and and uh, the cool thing about doing it that way is you, you, you can interact with fans along the way. You can develop... You, you, you can uh, uh, offer products that are actually requested during during the campaign. You can turn around quickly and, and you know, and you can respond to, you know, questions about the production or about the campaign itself or, you know, whatever. So that's real, real cool, just that aspect of it. Uh, and, and one of the things that we, and we're talking a lot about, what, what, what are we going to offer? You know, I mean, OK, we have the, the album that that's an obvious thing. Merchandise, that's obvious. But what else could we offer that might be interesting to our fans? So we can, and we all love wildlife, right? We we like to go out and 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 uh, uh, you know go fishing and tenting, and we like hiking up in the mountains. So we figure, you know, let let's let's see if this is something that people will will fall for. So 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 what we do is we invite ten people to uh, and each person uh, has to fly to Norway and they get a tent and a sleeping bag and we set up this humongous teepee thing <laughs> uh, that, that that can hold like 35 people and and uh, we just find a place in Norway that's famous for something you know it, 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 uh, we've been up in the mountains these two times that, that we've done it so far and they would just you know we just hang out we just sit around the the bonfire and share stories and and uh just have a real good time and that's been that, that, that's been real cool it's been real cool because we yeah. get to know our fans those those few fans we get to know real well and they obviously get to know us you know uh, uh quite a bit better than what they'll you know manage to do just via you know the web or whatever right uh and also one thing that we do every time with with those uh camping trips we always present something new some new material so those those 10 people will always be the absolute first you know people to hear uh uh one or two brand new tracks or ideas or you know whatever that's cool that's really cool yeah and and there you're also doing a um some sort of in-person listening party is that right did i read that right yeah yeah we we had uh well we were planning on doing that with uh with um uh state of deception too now, now the camping trip is just postponed but the, obviously the, the the listening party 
it doesn't make a whole lot of sense, you know, uh, a year and a half after the record is released, right? Okay. So that one's just canceled. So we, have, you know, we just refund refunded the the, the money that. that oh, people- I thought I thought maybe you were doing it for the um, the extended release next year. I mean, oh. I'm, I misunderstood. <laughs> maybe if it's out there it's just that's that's what we're doing for that but but i don't think we're planning on doing that for this we put we, we had it for a state of deception the, the 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 first time around last spring but as far as i know there's there's not one coming up well you might consider it you, you know you uh, got some new treats on this new thing uh give fans a chance to be there to be the first to, to hear it with you it might be fun yeah um uh well gosh i've i've already taken an over an hour of your time um, um, I have a cut, just a couple of quick questions, uh, to close. So, um, one of the things I like to, to ask folks I, I talk with is, is there a, another mountain that Roy Khan wants to climb? Meaning it, it could be musical, like, Hey, I would love to be in a, in a Broadway show someday, or it could be, you know, I want to go write a jazz record, but it could also be non-musical. Could be I want to be an actor, uh, mm-hmm. I want to be a carpenter. Um, is there something that's like a passion you have that just time hasn't afforded you the opportunity for? Uh, <laughs> let me think. Not really. <laughs> not not really. Right. A lot of musicians uh, I talk to, but, they're but, like, uh, yeah. I, 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 I'm I'm pretty much the type type of person that you know. Um, I really live. I, I really live in the moment. I, I really think I. I, uh, I'm pretty good at living in the moment and, uh, it's not like I don't dream about stuff, but you know, I'm re- I'm so busy these days with, with family. I have kids, three kids, right? They're, they're, they're eight, 11 and 14. Yeah. And you know, that's, that's more than a handful, uh, just that right there. And, and, uh, then I have conception and, uh, then I have, uh, I have, uh, this solo thing that I'm working on. And uh, it's it's uh, and and the last year I actually uh, I also been uh, because I, I I just got so bored with staying at home, and my mom and my dad didn't want to see me. <laughs> my friends they they you know uh, no movie theaters, no going out eating. I was just going completely crazy. But schools are uh, uh, open still, so um, I had this friend that asked me if I wanted to sit in as a music teacher and English teacher. Oh wow. Uh, so I've been doing that uh, and that's been great. You know, it's just, I mean, the, the kids are so full of life and that's it. That just, that's such a joy in my life. So, but I'm, obviously I can't do that. You know, like I've been doing it last year uh, when, when things have opened up again, like now, but uh, uh, it's, I, I don't really have, I, since you mentioned jazz record, I have, I mean, one of the, the directions that I have for my solo stuff is actually, you know, towards jazz. So, so that's going to be, there's going to, there's probably going to be a, a, you know, at least uh, let's say jazzy type record yeah. in, in there somewhere at some point. Well, uh, I have to tell you, man, I, I am um, the way that I may be a different kind of fan, but usually when I'm a fan of an artist, like I, I love all the things they do. I don't get kind of, fixated on a particular record or sound and you've got a voice that you could do jazz you could do standards like you could do that old you could i love the whole sinatra and dean martin like you have a voice where you could you could render those songs with like you could do it um and i don't know if there's a huge audience for it i think that audience is aging but some of that music is so beautiful and you have to have a certain voice to carry it off so I'll be watching to see that these other explorations from Roy Khan. I uh, uh, I'm excited by that idea a lot. Yeah, cool. Yeah, um, yeah. Just just keep watching out for it. It's gonna be it's gonna be there at some point. Okay. Well, hey man, um, thank you for, so much for spending some time with me. I'm a, I'm a, I'm I have a lot of regard for what you do and. Uh, We'll share this broadly and do what we can to encourage people to come and discover Conception and uh, the, your other musical endeavors. Cool. Thanks for having me, Peter. Really all right. Cool. If you'll just stick on the line, I can say a personal goodbye and we'll let all the streamers go. Cool. Okay. 